When the 12-inch MacBook first launched, I was really excited. Apple wasn't just marketing it as the next evolution of laptops, it was literally the thinnest and lightest laptop that I had ever heard of. But in 2016, is it still worth your money? Hey what's up everyone, CT and Technology News here, and in this video I'm going to be giving you my updated review of Apple's lightest laptop. <laughs> So the 12 inch Apple MacBook is really the laptop in its most basic stripped back form. This razor thin laptop weighs just 920 grams and like the original 2008 MacBook Air, it removes almost all external connections. It has no normal USB ports, no normal video outputs, and in fact it has as many ports as an iPad. You still get a headphone jack on one side, but a single new type of USB connector serves as the power input and the only external interface in one. You'll need an adapter to basically use any normal USB cable and there's no SD card slot for your camera's photos. It's an amazing concept, but it kind of defeats the point of having a really slim and light laptop if you're carrying around a ton of adapters and accessories with you wherever you go. Over time, more things will start to support USB Type-C since it is the new charging standard for mobile devices, but again, the new MacBook only does have the one port, which means you can't charge the laptop and be plugging something else in at the same time, or at least not without another dongle. The 12-inch MacBook really is just like the original MacBook Air, which only had a single USB port and a video output when it launched back in 2008. The MacBook Air of today has a lot more ports since Apple eventually relented and gave people more of what they were wanting, but for now the 12-inch MacBook seems like it's following a similar pattern. With that said though, the plus to having so few ports is just the sheer portability of the new MacBook. It can't match the super slim screen bezel on the Dell XPS 13, but you still get a 12 inch display in a laptop that's similar in size to past 11 inch laptops, and it's really just a great device for working in tight spots, and it's so thin and light that you don't need a hefty bag to carry it around. Now when you're actually using the laptop, you'll be impressed at how good the user interface is. The trackpad is actually quite impressive, Apple's basically replaced the standard click mechanism in favour of an electromagnet that creates an artificial click sensation, it feels exactly the same, and the only reason that Apple did this is again because the laptop was so thin they couldn't fit a normal trackpad inside. What's nice about the redesigned trackpad though is how you get the same feedback no matter where you click on the trackpad, it's something that I'm having a hard time getting used to, but it's actually really nice nonetheless. The force touch option Options are subtle rather than essential, but it's actually quite nice how you can press progressively harder to seek through QuickTime, and it's a shame that it's just limited to the OS and Apple apps for now. The keyboard meanwhile is also pretty impressive for a laptop of this size. Apple's basically had to re-engineer the entire concept of the keyboard to work in such a thin laptop, using a butterfly mechanism instead of the typical scissor keys. The result are keys that have a remarkably even and flat feel, but also a very very shallow travel. Most people probably won't like this really shallow travel, it didn't take me too long to get up to speed, but I can't guarantee that everyone will adapt to it so quickly. The action is still sharp and precise, so you're never left wondering if you did hit the key correctly, but still, it's just a little bit weird typing on a laptop that has a keyboard this thin. Now everyday performance on the MacBook is actually pretty impressive. You should have no problems with normal productivity and web browsing, even if you leave a lot of tabs open at the same time. There's 8GB of RAM as standard on this laptop, which is more than enough, as is the standard 256GB of flash storage. The Core M processor inside is also great for lightweight and moderate tasks, but you definitely won't want to use this laptop for really hardcore gaming or for video editing. What you lose in performance though, you do gain in peace and quiet. The MacBook is fanless and never gets noticeably warm, which is definitely easy to overlook when you're using this laptop for a long time. The screen on the MacBook is definitely impressive, it's a 12 inch panel with a 226 pixel per inch resolution, and that's every bit as good as on the 13 inch MacBook Pro. Apple's also kept the 16-10 aspect ratio, which means you get a little bit more vertical screen space compared to the majority of Windows laptops. So those are basically all the essentials about the 12 inch MacBook, and that brings me to the point of whether or not you should get one. Don't get me wrong, it's perfectly possible to live with a laptop like the 12 inch MacBook, I mean the Core M processor isn't the most powerful as I already said, but you can definitely get by for moderate and standard tasks, so long as you're not doing anything too powerful on your laptop. But here's the thing, the 12 inch MacBook is no longer as special as it was. Apple has officially been beaten by HP in terms of sheer size, the new Spectre laptop is actually thinner and lighter than the 12 inch MacBook, which means that if you're looking for the sheer smallest laptop you can find, you probably should go with the Spectre rather than the 12 inch MacBook. Also the 12 inch MacBook is reasonably expensive at $12.99 for the base model, and a lot of people may not be wanting to spend that for a laptop with only one port and one headphone jack. 
I mean, sure, the 12-inch MacBook is really nice to look at, and I can understand how a lot of people might think they would want this laptop, but I just honestly cannot recommend it, considering the other alternatives available. But with that said, give me your opinions about Apple's thinnest and lightest laptop in the comments below. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time.